Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Z. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. This video is for all of the adult viewers that I have that are constantly asking yourself this vital question of how can you 100% uh, know for a fact you are transgender. The sense of knowing, as I said in some of my other videos, is something that we as humans tend to um, have a need for we tend to feel that we really need to know something 100 percent uh, especially when it comes to something as serious as gender transition and i can understand where that sense of knowing comes from in this video i'm going to offer to you um i'm not going to tell you how you can 100 percent know and i'll tell you why but i am going to offer you uh, a ways to look at it that is going to uh, give you certain uh certain things to help you understand and start trusting your own inner knowing. So let's start with this 100%. Can we please acknowledge that a lot of transgender folks, um, when they started to question their gender identity or when they started taking steps towards their uh, authentic self, did not 100% knew that they were transgender. They were most likely struggling with severe gender dysphoria and if it wasn't severe they had some element of gender dysphoria maybe some people had also gender euphoria one way or another a lot of you did not feel comfortable or very disaligned with your gender assigned at birth and so a lot of people when they move forward any kind of uh, transition related services if there are for them for example even social transition don't know 100 percent there are, of course, people who know 100%, and that's amazing. But the reality is that a lot of people will not know 100%. And the main reason why a lot of people will not know 100% is because we live in a world where... <laughs> How should I say it? Because this is just it kills me every time. We live in a world where there's so much in this world that constantly tells you consciously and subconsciously that you don't exist and that you don't belong when you're being told you don't exist and you don't belong and that your identity is not valid and that transgender identity is um, some form of uh, ideology or the transgender identity is a mental illness you start distrusting yourself you start distrusting who you are you start distrusting your own inner feelings your own um, intuition you start to really not believing yourself. And this is where lack of 100% is going to come from. Because there's so much in this world that doesn't support, not only does it not support you exploring your gender, but it also tells you that your gender is strictly anchored to your sex and there's no other way to be. This is why 100% is not realistic for a lot of people. Again, there are people who know 100% and that's amazing. I don't think the point is knowing 100%. Now, I know some people watching this who are, um, I have aspired to this point, uh, people who are against my opinions and my views, and you're probably eager to comment and say, how can you say that if you don't know 100%, you should move forward with transition? I say if you don't know 100%, but you pretty uh, confident is not the wrong way, but but you know that you're not comfortable with the gender assigned at birth. Yeah, I'd say go and move forward to social transition. Sure. Social transition is there's nothing in social that you're going to engage that is going to be irreversible. It's a great way to explore. And it's about moving forward and exploring yourself and as you move forward and explore yourself, you start affirming for yourself how things really feel. It's one thing to have feelings about your gender. It's another thing when you start engaging in things that either validate those, those feelings are true through you actually feeling them and experiencing them, or when you're actually starting to live through those experiences. Gender is experiential. Our relationship to ourselves is very much also experiential. We have to experience ourselves. We have to experience ourselves in a particular authenticity in order to even really affirm for ourselves that this feels right. For that reason, social tradition is amazing. I don't care what what um, some people who are really against trans folks say, because there's a lot of misinformation about uh, trans folks jumping into medical and surgical. I'm talking to adults. 
And I know that adults don't jump into things. And I know that adults take their time. So one of the ways to move the needle from, let's say right now you're saying, you know what? I'm like 60% sure I'm trans, but not 100% sure. The best way to move that needle closer to closer to 100%, even though, like I said, chances of having 100% is, and it's not the point, but moving that needle closer to 100% is you engaging in some kind of form of social transition and figuring things out for yourself. But that's what I wanted to say about not knowing 100% and why 100% is not really that important. Of course, you need to have some sense of discomfort with your gender assigned at birth, right? Um, you need to have some sense of something is going on there that is telling you that you're not comfortable with how people gender you to even start this exploration phase, right? But let's get back to a lot of you who are just really feel like you need 100% to know. And I, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to give you a way to look at it that is going to help you start trusting yourself. As I said already, social transition is a great way to start trusting yourself because you're going to actually do things. You're going to actually um, immerse a little bit in presentation and in gender uh, exploration and gender role that you are closely, feel like you're closely to your authenticity. And by doing so, if it is your core gender identity, you should feel affirmed. And you feel affirmed, you'll feel more confident. And if you feel more confident, you'll start trusting yourself. So that's one way to do it. But most importantly, another way to do it, and this is especially important for a lot of you who are older and who've been struggling with gender dysphoria for decades. And I mean decades because I know that a lot of you have been living with dysphoria for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, 30 years. Instead of thinking, how can I be 100% sure, ask yourself of what you do already know. Look at your history. History is data. Data are facts. What are the facts you have in front of you? Now, some of the facts you have is that you've been struggling with gender dysphoria for decades. What does it mean? That means that for decades you have not been comfortable with your gender assigned at birth. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's a fact that you have not been comfortable. If you have not been comfortable with your gender assigned at birth for 10, 15, 20, 25, 20 years, what makes you think you're going to suddenly become comfortable with your gender assigned at birth in a couple of years from today? What makes you think more time is going to make you feel more comfortable with your gender assigned at birth if you're already given so much time to it? That's a fact. So the fact, and this is a little bit challenging because I know that a lot of younger adults and a lot of older adults who became, those of you who in both groups, younger adults and older, those of you who became aware that you have gender dysphoria later in your life um, may say, well, I don't really feel like, I don't recall much of gender dysphoria in my childhood. I just became aware of it. Um, I just started to feel this way. So I don't really have that much fact to back it up. So it may be actually that much more challenging for you. And that's where you feel probably even more confusion right now, where you ask yourself, why suddenly I woke up and I feel uh, dysphoria. For, but for the, a lot of rest of you who have that history of dysphoria, that is the fact you cannot disregard. That fact is telling you something, and it's what's telling you is that something that you're not. And what you're not is your gender assigned at birth. Because if you've been struggling with dysphoria for decades, it's a fact that that is not your gender. Otherwise, don't you think you would have gotten somehow accustomed to um, the gender? This is why when people suggest that uh, transgender is just something that you need to work through in psychotherapy uh, to feel more comfortable with your gender assigned at birth. I say bullshit because look at all the adults we have who've been living with gender dysphoria for 25, 30 years, struggling with gender dysphoria. Isn't that enough time to make them comfortable with their gender assigned at birth? In fact, you feel even more discomfort with your gender assigned at birth. A lot of you tried everything and anything under the sun, getting married having kids, enlisting in military. I mean, you name it. Oh my God, the things all of you have tried, um, you're like an expert in this field. And yet you 100% don't know because you've been told not to trust yourself. 
And the best way to trust yourself is to look at the facts. Look at this. This is a fact. So two ways to break out of this 100% don't know and move the needle closer to 100% knowing. Again, as I said, not going to be full achievable to anybody, but that's not the point. One, social transition, especially going to be important for young adults and adults who just realize they have dysphoria and don't have this fact that you're carrying with you. Social transition, again, is going to help you to trust yourself because it's either going to feel right or it's not going to feel right. And two, for those of you who have the data, why are we sitting on it? Is it not enough? Is it not enough information? Is it not enough? Now, if I have spent most of my life, well, I've been a psychologist for going on 16 years, but um, yeah, let's say 16 years is a long time. If I, after 16 years, kept thinking how much I hate being a psychologist, which is not true, I love being a psychologist, but let's say, you know, and I was just thinking, should I change my career or not? But I'm not 100% sure. Wouldn't you tell me, Dr. Z, 16 years you've been hating doing this? I think it's very clearly, this is not a, not a career for you. Well, the same thing goes for you. So don't disregard the facts. Look at the facts. And you do have long trail of those facts. You have long trail of pain and suffering and feeling like you don't belong because you've been living in the gender you, assigned, you were assigned at birth, but it's really not who you are at the core. So let's look at the facts and start trusting ourselves because the facts don't lie. How you've been feeling all these years does not lie to you. That's your inner knowing. We all need to start learning how to start trusting ourselves again because there's so much out there in the media, especially today, that tells us to mistrust ourselves. And it's important to learn how to listen to that voice. So if you're watching this, comment below, let me know. Are you still sitting there waiting for 100% of knowing? And why are you waiting for 100% knowing? And if you have decades and decades and decades of fact that you're not comfortable with gender assigned at birth, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? It kills me. So comment below, let me know. I love reading all of your comments. And I see you all next time. Bye.